Hello! Here's a weird one. A driving simulator for children. Hmm. I mean, from a young age, boys do want to drive a car to be like Daddy, or to get away from Daddy. And in the mid-80s, the uh, manufacturer of electronics and fun toy times, Tommy, decided to come up with something to allow them to do just that. Here with the Tommy Racing Turbo. Look, it's got a Porsche thing going on. That might have said Porsche once before it's ripped off, but that was many years ago by the looks of it. This is one of those things that used to appear on television adverts and frequently in the Argos catalogue and other things small children looked at, wondering what toys to get for Christmas. Only from Toby. Sorry, that's stuck in my head really badly the whole time I look at this thing. Anyway, the idea behind it, as previously said, is driving simulator. Look, it's got a dashboard and steering wheel and gear lever and ignition key and a really ominously shite looking screen. Yeah. This is kind of something that, um, to be brutally honest, we weren't interested in in the mid-80s being too old at age eight. It just kind of looked overly simple, like there was no game to it, it was just some very basic simulation. And indeed, the uh, blurb for it in the Argos catalogue describes it as simulated driving fun. Let's see how simulated. And the first thing that strikes me is it's tiny. I always thought it would be bigger than this. It's a little old thing. Look at the tiny steering wheel. Obviously for younger children than I thought, which doesn't bode well to how much fun it's going to be. Um, let's see what happens then. Oh. Well, this is a mostly mechanical device, I feel. Because when you move the uh, steering wheel with it turned off, you can see the little shadow of the red car flying about there. I get the feeling the background is just going to be some sort of looped printed thing. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. Counter reset. Ooh, put the trips down to zero, look, so you can see how many miles you haven't got in your pretend car. Presumably that's on and off. You've got some kind of... Uh, oh, look! Ah! Let's zoom in on the old dashboard there. Right, when you move the gear stick forward, look, everything goes up. Oh, little turbo light. Well, pretend light comes on. Is that your speedometer there? Nope, this is the speedometer. Right, down at zero. Go to first gear, 20. Then 40, then 60, then 100 for super mega speed thing. And you've got some sort of taco that goes up and down as well. And that appears to be about all they can get out of that. Um, it's basically just going to be that with a scrolling background, isn't it? Let's find out. I've got all the batteries ready. I haven't actually double checked they're the right ones, so we could be in for immediate disappointment and a jump cut. Nope, we're all right. Okay, uh, how does that go in? These ones towards the bottom. These ones towards the top. That's easy enough. Lock it in. Right, can we all see the screen? I can't. Well, I'll have to do. Turn it on! Oh my goodness! Well, they've tried to make it look like an early video game by the looks of it. You've got sort of grid on the background there, and there's the car moving around in front of it and stretching the background slightly when it goes to the far right. Also it makes a really horrible mechanical noise, but you've probably worked that out already. Can we zoom in on the screen a bit? Yeah, here we go. That was weird. Mmm, old mechanics. Right, ready? Let's take this baby out of neutral. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. It's stuck. Ah, oh, we've got it going. Here we are. Well, first gear's pretty fast. As it seems to zoom along this bit of track, and there is a car to the left. And that's it. It loops that quickly. Can you hit the car? Nope. Can you hit the tree? Nope. This isn't much of a driving simulator, really, is it? Um, because, in fact, you can't interact with any of the background at all. Um, yes, it sort of wobbles left and right a bit as it goes around, and that's your lot. How quick can we go, then? That third gear or fourth gear? I can't tell. Ah, oh, there's maximum speed. Whoa, hey, look at that. Oh. It's got stuck. Percussive maintenance. I think I've upset it now. Oh dear, <clears throat> I've broken my toy already. Come on! On you go. Nope. Well, I haven't had much fun out of this yet. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Spin, spin. Is it bad battery connection, maybe? No, no it's not, is the answer to that. Um, come on. Oh, 
Oh no, I'm running out of fuel as well. Is that the problem? I've run out of fuel? Hang on. Ah! That was weird. The fuel went down to zero and it wouldn't move anymore. So there is some form of simulation, but only in the form of running out of petrol, which is not that exciting. Yeah, the trip seems to stick on seven. Yeah, there's the problem, look. When you get to seven miles, everything jams up. Now I can't go to the left either. Oh dear. I can't help feeling this would have worked slightly better when it was new. At least I hope so. Off. On. Counter. Reset. Go. Go. Go on. Oh dear. This is really naked now. <laughs> I can't even get the car to go to the left. It's jammed up inside. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to have to take that apart and have a look at it. Or, more realistically, chuck the bloody thing in the bin. Oh well, there we are. That is simulated driving fun for children around the mid-80s. Do you want to know how much this thing cost? In 1986 it cost £18 in the Argos catalogue. And bringing that up to today's values by using a combination of the retail price index and average wages to give a completely unscientific and almost certainly useless figure, we get uh, £40. Could you imagine paying the equivalent of £40 for that? You would have to have a very, very vocal child, wouldn't you? Dad, can I have one of these? Dad, can I have one of these? All right, just shut up and play with your stupid car toy that doesn't work properly and is now broken after five minutes. Well, I say after five minutes, this thing is like 25 years old, as the dirt on it probably gives away. Yeah, I think the main problem with this is that it's not a driving simulation at all, because a driving simulation would give you some form of screen or view where it would actually look like you were driving a car, not that you were floating above it in a bizarre precursor to some of Virtual Racing's groovier camera angles. Hmm. Looks like we were right to not be interested in this toy and instead hassle Dad for Astro Wars. And now, failed reviews. Items I got to review but then didn't review for one reason or another. Let's find out why. First thing, it's a keychain. A small blue box on a keychain. Just the sort we're not interested in. Do you know what it actually is? The world's worst fake DS. It's just one of those crappy brick games. In fact, there's batteries still in. The one with the child that waves his arms in a frightening manner. You know, the out-of-focus one. There we go. Um, yeah, couldn't really do a whole lot with this. Seen a lot of brick games before. This one's particularly nasty. It appears to be based loosely on a DS Lite. And has the worst design flaw ever, in that you open it up, and the front literally just springs back down. Therefore rendering it pretty much unplayable, unless you hinge it open or keep holding it strangely with your other hand. Away! Break. I love that sound. Next up, controller stand charging used for PS3, designed for charging the PS3 controllers. Not really sure why I've sent this, because I can't do a whole lot with this. Um, it's a stand that you plug into your PlayStation 3, and it has like a USB hub and space for two charging of the controllers. Look, there you go. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, so you can probably see why I didn't review that. Not a whole lot to do with it. Also, completely useless for me as I only have one PS3 controller, therefore making something that charges two a bit pointless. But hey, it is piano black and therefore collects dust nicely. Back in the box. Away you go. Anything else amusing written on it? No. And finally, the VX1. From our friends we've never heard of at Blue Chip. Mmm. Clear, innovative precision in association with Verix ass. Great. Was Verix told about this? Anyway, yes, the VX1. A tiny, tiny wee thing. Looks like a calculator is in fact a mobile phone. Absolutely tiny mobile phone. Look how small it is in my hand. It's like smaller than a credit card. Or probably exactly the same size as a credit card. Um, let's open it up. I can show you. Look, tiny little battery in it. <gasps> And if we can get that out, which I can't actually seem to, there we go. The SIM card slots in there, and uh, away you go making calls. And from what I recall of it, the screen is rubbish. I mean, like really horrible ancient uh, LED thing. 
LCD even. If it was LED, that would be much cooler. And it's got basic functionality, but it's very difficult to do anything due to rubbish screen. But if you want something really small, you know, something disposable you wouldn't mind losing, because I think it was about £12. I bought it from a supermarket. Um, this is absolutely perfect. You know, you can call people and it works. And, um, you know, you can send text messages, although it's a bit of a fiddly chore, but it does work. Oh, wait, I lied. It doesn't work. I turned it on once. It worked. Turned it on again. Never worked again. Hence why it was never reviewed. 